Hi, I'm Morten Nielsen from the WASP team, and in this demonstration I will talk about the uh, support in the wind farm assessment tool for power performance measurements done by nacelle anemometers. So this is in a second standard, which is a little different from the usual uh, power performance measurement standard, but you don't have any reference mast in front of the uh, turbine. You're doing the uh, reference measurements by anemometers on the nacelle. So there's no, uh, the question is not so much about uh, whether you need a side calibration or not, but uh, on the uncertainties of these measurements. That also means that the checklist of uh, the wake assessments is simpler because you don't have the mast. And uh, the wind, uh, the measurement sectors is different because uh, you need to add uh, something to this uh, wake affected sector and that is uh, related to uncertainty of the, the direction measurements and also uh, maybe the yaw misalignment of the nacelle when you are doing the measurements. And uh, the obstacle assessment, that means they have a, a rule that if you have a large obstacle then you have to divide it into smaller blocks of maximum of 50 by 50 meters and then you are analyzing each uh, element or block by uh, individually. And also the criteria for for this obstacle significance that's only based on the height of the obstacles and the height of the turbine. So you're no longer using the the same formula, uh, the Perret formula, which uh, we know from, from WASP. And also the terrain assessments, that's done differently. So you have uh, different terrain assessments in the side assessment standards, the dash one, and in the, the main power performance measurements, dash 12, dash one, and in this new dash 12 dash 2. So uh, it's all very confusing here. So I think when you're going to work with something, then you should uh, check in the standards to be sure that you know the rules. But here it's, um, it's they're using a, um, and or first they always do a dash 12 dash 1 side assessment. And on top of them, then they're doing something else. They are saying we want to say, say what is the Riggs number. It's a little like the, the Riggs number which is known from WASP, except that uh, they're doing it for three different thresholds and also the slope. It's not uh, directly the slope, but they say they have a fixed uh, step width here uh, and then the, the maximum uh, change in, in the elevation is related to, to, the, to the height of the obstacle. And they're doing this for three different thresholds here and then they're making an overall assessment and there's also something that um, uh, they are considering uh, uh, these transects uh, for different directions and if a lot of them uh, next to each other are having a big step then they have detected a ridge they say and that you also get a penalty for, for that. So here we are back in the wind farm assessment tool and uh, if you want to work with this uh, dash 12 dash 2 standard then you go into project options here and uh, go down to this section called terrain obstacle assessments and then uh, change the standard to follow to uh, dash 12 dash 2 and then you can also uh, change some of the other rules and uh, here you can see for instance some of these obstacles they are only you're only considering uh, it you have divided them in parts and uh, you can go here to the obstacle list then the signature is uh, different sometimes the whole obstacle is then you it's done like this and it's only in part then you can go here and if you want to say which part of is it that it's uh, then you click on in this uh, uh, um, report here and then say show obstacle parts and then you can see where it's uh, significant and where it's not and um, then uh, if you go to the obstacle assessment here then uh, you can see that some of these uh, conditions here they are no longer active here's a warning saying we have forgot to tell about the uncertainty of the wind direction uncertainty so by this then we click here on the uh, this um, side calibration object and then you can specify causes for uncertainty there's some 
uh, example here which you can take, uh, but of course you should make your own assessment. So uh, when I click this, then um, this uh, measurement sector will become uh, smaller because uh, uh, it's um, because of this uncertainty of the wind duration. And uh, then uh, you can still see the normal terrain assessment in the DAS 12 DAS 1 standard. And then up top of them you have this uh, terrain assessment with the BRICS numbers here. And over here you can read the, the conclusions according to this standard. There's also there's a main plot theme on these BRICS numbers here. Uh, it's not so clear, but uh, it's going to illustrate these uh, different directions and what the, the sub-conclusions are uh, here. And then you can also see where uh, is uh, is um, where the, is the terrain uh, steeper than than supposed to be? Um, yes, and I think this was all which I had to tell about this test 12, test 2 standard.